Hi everyone and welcome back to Kochi TV. This is the second part of a two-part video on critical velocity or 10K pace workouts. In part one, we talked about some of the science and the theoretical adaptations that come from training at this workout intensity. Today we're going to take a look at um, some training design, but if you missed part one, I would highly suggest watching that part first. It's in the description down below. I'm Kyle Giacono. I'm the head boys cross country and track coach at Wharton High School in Tampa, Florida, and I have been for the last six years. If you want a closer look at my credentials, they are on the screen. So let's get right into some critical velocity workout types. First, we're going to talk about um, distance runners specifically, where they would benefit from some workout designs. Two main ones, and then you can, ha you can have um, critical velocity intervals. Okay, so again, this is at 92% of VVO2 max. We talked about how you can set up some, um, what your person's pace would be um, in the video for part one. So if you missed that, I would watch it. Um, all of these workouts that I'm going to talk about here do need a full warm up. This is pretty high intensity. It's not VO2 max or aerobic power, but it's more intense than, say, lactic threshold or tempo. So make sure all these workouts do contain a complete warm up. Now, I would not do this, if you're doing them for, for this type of reason, um, critical velocity intervals, I would not do more than one per microcycle, and they should replace a lactic threshold workout or a tempo workout. You would not want more than one of either these or a lactic threshold tempo workouts in any microcycle, either a week or however you, however you look at your microcycle length. Um, you want to have about two to three miles worth of total work. Now remember an interval is a period of work followed by a period of rest. The rest period is actually the interval. So you want to have two to three total miles of the work, um, the critical velocity work. And the reps should be anywhere from 200 to about 800 meters. So they're slightly shorter rests, but they're going to be in one set because we're treating this basically as a, as a tempo run, and you'll see why this will be basically as almost a continuous run. And the, and the rest is going to be what you would give somebody if this was a continuous run. If you had, say, a long run and your kids needed to get a 30-second water break, um, it's the same thing. So it's basically the rest that you would give for a continuous type run if they just need a quick water break. So... Say you're doing 800 meters, um, you're going to do, say, four, um, four to six of these. You're going to have them do an 800 in their critical velocity pace, 30 to 60 seconds, and then they hit the next one. It is incomplete rest. That is the, the deciding factor in what makes an interval workout an interval. This is two things. It can replace a lactic threshold workout, but typically when I've done these, they're more to transition to some faster work. So maybe right where you're doing, you're transitioning from your specific prep, maybe like the last week or two of specific prep as you transition to your pre-competitive phase where you're going to have some faster work like special endurance one, special endurance two, those type of workouts. This not only helps them get some tempo work in, but it helps transition them to that faster pace kind of work because they're going to feel some acid develop as they do this workout because again at 92% they're not going to be able to fully clear all the acids so they are going to have some building acid. As we talked about in part one, the limiting factor on these days is going to be the acid development. So critical velocity test is the other one. Um, we talked about this. You can directly test somebody's critical velocity, and what you would do is this is, again, going to replace a lactic threshold workout in a microcycle. After a full warm-up, 30 to 60 minutes, as fast as they can possibly go. Um, I suggest shorter for a high school kid. This is only good for kids with really high training ages. This can give some additional metrics to look at their running economy. I'll do a full video where we talk about that, how you can glean some of these from it. But basically, you would consider this to be a very, very fast, hard um, tempo run, a very high intensity run if you're thinking about where you would fit this into your, your training year. Probably more the end of general prep, beginning of, of specific prep when you're really trying to get them a little bit harder um, type of work. But again, this is good with kids for high training ages, especially if you're going to try and go out to 60 minutes. I've never done that. I usually stick right at this 30 minutes, but you would really want to make sure it's a kid with high training age. Let's talk about middle distance kids and younger kids. In part one, we talked about why some of these workout types are better for these kids. And when I say middle distance, short mid distance, a four 800 meter kid, um, not just a kid that maybe has been doing 3,200 meter stuff and you want to get them able to run some 800s. That's not what we're talking about here. Short middle distance and younger kids. And we talked about why that would be in part one if you missed it. These would be additions. These would be some things that you would do maybe along with these others, probably not a critical velocity test when you're thinking about this, but maybe in addition to critical velocity intervals. So 
Critical velocity intervals are still at 92%, but we're going to make these long intervals. These are basically going to replace aerobic power or VO2 max workouts for these types of kids. And again, please watch video on part one. It's going to explain why you might do these. Again, this is a little bit more theoretical. It has not been directly tested. So please watch that video first before you maybe take this under um, consideration of replacing your aerobic power with critical velocity. As I mentioned, it replaces aerobic power. Again, three to four miles. Aerobic power is typically three to four miles. So you still want to get that amount of work. The reps are going to be longer than just these short intervals. This is more of a tempo run. This is an aerobic power or long interval type run. So you would want to go anything from 800 to 1600 meters. Continuous work in this zone is why it works. But you can break this up into two sets, um, especially for kids that are short, mid-distance, and younger runners may benefit from going two miles and then splitting it or maybe a mile and a half and then splitting it with a longer rest period. The rest interval in between or within the actual sets themselves is going to be rest equaling work. So maybe you have a kid whose 1600 meter pace is six minutes. So maybe you're going to do four times 1600 meters at critical velocity, if their critical velocity is six minutes, you would do one mile at six minutes, give them six minutes off, do another mile, and then you would give them, if you wanted to do it in sets, maybe 10 minutes in between, a longer rest period. Then you would hit rest rep three, six minutes, rep four, and they're done. On um, both of these intervals, you definitely want your recovery to be active recovery. Again, you're going to be developing some acid as you're doing this, and um, the the of recovery, just a jog for 30 to 60 seconds, um, and in this one, if it's a longer one, make sure that they're really um, they're really moving. It's going to get any acid out of their system as they're doing this. Now you can also do repetitions in our video on aerobic power, and that's actually in the description down below. You can um, see, again, early in the season, you would do this with aerobic power, and late in the season, you do repetitions. It would keep the same intensity, but as they get more fit, 92% becomes of a faster pace, so the intensity goes up because they become more fit. This is going to get rid of that. Um, this is going to be a replacement for aerobic power um, reps. Two to three miles, a little bit shorter than the three to four miles that are going on here. Your reps are going to be 800 to 1600 meters like right here, but they're typically in one set because it's shorter total volume. And they typically tend to be a little bit on the longer side, so maybe you've been doing maybe thousands. As you transition to this, maybe you're going to do 1200s or 1600s or something like that. Rest on a repetition is longer. It'd be like your rep or your uh, set rest period. So if again, if you have a kid who's a mile who's six minutes, you're probably going to give them a 10 minute rest in between repetitions if you're at this point in your training year. So these are additions of things you can do with this type of kid. I would not do this with your pure distance kid. Okay, again, in part one of this video, we talked about why you wouldn't do that. These are additions for these specific situations for these kids. So some look fors and danger points here we want to look at. Heat is a big factor on these days, okay? Um, try to have these on cooler days of the week, especially if you're doing those ones that are more for your distance kids, your critical velocity test, or those regular intervals, the ones that have the very short recovery. As they're having this more continuous type work, the heat is going to build up in their body, and it's really going to affect them as they're going through it. So try to keep these on cooler days or times. If you can do it before school, that's great. Um, we're fortunate enough to be able to do this in Tampa, Florida, um, where we don't start school until 8.40. So we can get a full workout in. Just make it work for, for your situation to where you can get this into where the heat isn't going to be dictating your workout intensity. Have them check as they're doing it, 25 to 30, if they're checking their heart rate, 25 to 30 in a 10-second interval. That's exactly meaning they're in the right range. If it's above this, they're, they're probably working too hard, and hopefully it's not because of the heat um, that this is happening. So make sure you're getting the right training effect from the correct intensity. And again, be smart about what you're using. Pure distance kids will not get very much out of these days. Okay, They're only going to get more of a tempo type effect. They have better aerobic capacity, so you would really want to be selective with these. But again, there's anecdotal evidence that suggests that these have great importance for short mid-distance kids and younger runners. Okay, This probably means you're going to have to split up your group. You really shouldn't be training your 800-meter kids with your 3,200-meter kids anyway. So this is just more reason why you'd want to split them up because what your, your pure distance, your 3,200-meter kids in track and the kids that love cross-country need is going to be very different than these short middle-distance kids. And if you're trying to get them all the same thing, you're, you're really not doing the best by all those groups. If you're just going to be, I'm going to do one workout and that's how we're going to do this. 
You can add volume with an immediate cooldown. You're doing uh, a critical velocity test where they go 30 minutes. Have them right afterward, and I don't mean go get a drink and then five minutes later. I mean, boom, finish with a mile or two on the back end. Now, the critical velocity test can still have pretty high volume, but definitely on those critical velocity intervals, the long intervals or repetitions, as soon as they're done, send them on their way. Make it almost like a continuous type of running to where, boom, and instead of doing a rest interval, you're just going on a two-mile run, three-mile run, something that's going to get all the acid out of their system so that you don't have to ice and you're not going to feel it the next day and you're going to get some aerobic benefit. There is, again, things that can happen, enhanced lactic acid clearance, running economy, all these different things we talked about in part one. And by adding this on the back end, you're going to have some of these, these aerobic benefits from continuous running. Again, 20 minutes is good. You might even just say, go on a 20-minute. Don't tell them a distance. Just guys, go on a 20-minute run. Girls, go on a 20-minute run. Um, afterwards, that's a nice, easy recovery pace to kind of help make sure that they don't fall in volume too much. So some key takeaway points I want us to look at here. Critical velocity workouts are extension of your lactic threshold work and some transition to faster work for distance kits. Okay, they're going to get some cardiovascular, muscular, and metabolic improvements. These kids, your distance kids, typically I'll have mine do maybe three or four a year. Between they'll have maybe like three, uh, two, maybe three critical velocity tests, two, probably not more than two of those critical velocity intervals as I'm trying to transition them to faster work. Probably I would do like three critical velocity tests and like one of those transition workouts. You're not going to get a lot of these from from your distance kids. They're just an extension of your lactic threshold work. Um, but these may be a good replacement anecdotally, not scientifically tested, but anecdotal evidence says that aerobic power workouts may be able to be replaced by these workouts for short, mid-distance, and younger kids. And again, by younger kids, we mean maybe you're freshmen if you're t dealing with high school, um, but probably if you're more in the middle school um, range if you're training kids in that age range. This is because the short middle distance kids have reduced aerobic capacity and your younger kids are much more hurt by the acid that can build up at aerobic power. So again, as we just mentioned, do not let the volume slip. These days are extensions of more aerobic type runs, um, aerobic power um, for, for some groups, but they're more an extension of your lactic threshold. So you, the continuous nature of these is the key. Make sure that you're getting some volume with a good cool down on the back end, and you can get a lot out of these days. So um, if you like this video, please think about liking or subscribing um, down below. Um, I have a couple of videos that I, I would really suggest you watch in tandem with this if you're really going to get the most out of it. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments down below. And until next time, this has been Coach ETV.